Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Mutual Broadcasting System presents Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper and which features Ernest Chappell. Quiet, Please, for tonight is called A Red and White Guidon. Hey, troops. Got a guidon now. It's nice. It's red and white. It's got all the old silver rings on the lance pole with names of places engraved on them. Cold Harbor, Spotsylvania, all them places. And some new ones. Some are, Lady. Yeah, it looks fine. But it ain't the right one. It ain't the old silk one, the battle guy, Don. That's the one I lost for him. And I'm paying for it. No, oh, it ain't that. You know the saying in the Army, whatever you lose, you're going to find it on the payroll. Ain't that. I'm paying for a difference. I walk into Fiddler's Green once, twice a year, and first thing some fella hollers at me, you get out of here, Noah Wellman. You're the fella lost A Troop's guide on. And that free whiskey there on the bar looks awful good to me, but I wipe my mouth on my sleeve and turn around and go out again, change out of my old blue uniform with the white yellow stripes on my breeches legs and my upside-down sergeant stripes. And I put on G.I. cotton and pick up my rifle and my bayonet and go back to A Troop. Rifle and bayonet. Imagine a cavalryman with a bayonet. Well, if you can imagine a cavalryman without no horse, I guess you can imagine a bayonet, too. Now, they won't leave me into Fiddler's Green. But once in a while, somebody will stop me as I'm leaving. Maybe it'll be Seamus Daly that was guided on before me. And he'll say, kind of homesick, hey, no, he'll say, the band's still playing Gary Owen in the old outfit. And I'll say, you bet your life, Seamus, when they don't play Gary Owen no more, there won't be no 7th Cavalry. <laughs> Seamus, he kind of grins, and he slips me a half pint of that Monongahela rye, and <laughs> I come away, and maybe there's a Maybe there's a little nip in the bottle for some of the other boys that's in the same fix I'm in. And I walk along the ways with these other fellas, and most generally we meet the old man. He'll be walking along slow and his spurs jingling. Them big Mexican spurs he always wore. And we'll snap it up and throw him a big salute, and he'll grin at us and holler, Howdy, boys! And we'll say, Howdy, sir! And he'll... Walk on slow down towards Fiddler's Green. And we'll feel worse than ever. Because the old man, he can't get into Fiddler's Green either. I don't know. Maybe I ought to tell you about this guy, Don, huh? You know what a guy, Don, is. Well, it's a kind of little swallowtail flag. Nowadays, every outfit in the Army has one company flag, you know. All colors, even the MPs, they got one that's yellow and green. But there was a day when nobody but Calvary had a guide on. Red and white. Top half red with the regiment's number in white. Lower half white with the troop letter in red, like 7A. A troop, 7th Calvary. Only when I first enlisted, they still called them companies, just like in the Doughboys. Yeah, it was quite a while ago. A troop, uh, a company of cavalry was quite a sight in them days. Old red and white guide on crackling away in the wind. Sixty-three men in blue suits with their sabers flashing in the sunlight. And we had mounted bands. Yes, sir, drum major out the front with his saber beating time. Twenty-eight men on horseback blowing horns. And a big old white drum horse with kettle drums big as a keg of beer. <laughs> quite a sight. Nowadays... Oh, well, it's still cavalry, even if we do have our own feet. But I still kind of miss them horses. 
I met this Seamus Daly when I first joined up with the old outfit. I'd been in the war, and when they mustered us out in 65, I fooled around home for a while, and then I got kind of restless, so I just up and left. Went out west and took on another blanket, like the saying was. They put me into the 7th Cavalry, A Troop. A Company, I mean. That was where I first got to know this Seamus Daly. He was guide on of A Company. Oh, yeah, the guide on the fellow that carries the boat called guide on. I remember the night I was sitting on the barracks porch. Doggone if I ain't forgot what post that was. Yeah, I'd been so many, D.A. Russell, maybe, or Laramie, or Summers. Yeah, I was sitting there smoking this QM cigar in the dark all by my lonesome, and I hear this whistling. <laughs> Gary Owen. Well, sir, thinks I, that can't be nobody but Sergeant Seamus Daly. Then Sergeant Seamus Daly has been at a bottle, Summers, on account of he don't whistle, Gary Owen, unless he has. So he steps up onto the porch, and I say in the dark, Good evening, Sergeant Daly. And who will that be? Me, Noah Wellman, the trumpeter. Well, it is a fine night for a trumpeter, Wellman. Fine night for what, Sergeant? Well, for uh, uh, whatever you'd be wanting to do. Oh. Well, for having to drop at the crater, if you had the inclination, like. Well, now, if anybody's to offer me a little supper, some fine Monongahela rice, Sergeant. Trumpeter Wellman. You know that a non-commissioned officer is forbid by regulations to drink with a private soldier. Well, I'm a trumpeter, Sergeant. Oh, ho. Well, now, I've been through the cavalry drill regulations, and the army regulations tell me feet hurt. And I do not remember ever seeing anything about not drinking with trumpeters. And besides, I was a sergeant once. Ha! Who wasn't? <laughs> well, then, trumpeter, blow a blast for freedom onto the neck of this bottle, will you? Sergeant... That's an order. <laughs> it does grasp you by the gullet now, don't it? Uh, did you leave any for me? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> then here is confusion to all the enemies of the Irish. <sighs> Would you care to join me in an old ballad, maybe, then? Mm. Not at this time of night, Sergeant. Them beds in the guardhouse is awful hard. Uh, many's the time I slept on them. At Jefferson Barracks now, they got bugs. This is a very clean guardhouse. I like my own bug. Well, then, seeing you won't sing, shall we have words? Uh, sure. Sit down. You was in the war, was you not? Company B, 2nd Michigan Cavalry. Was you now? I was in the fire zoars from New York. That was quite an outfit, I hear. No, it was all right. But the uniforms were kind of silly-like. Red pants. <laughs> Will you toot another tune on the bottle trumpeter? Uh, thanks. To uh, your health, Sergeant. Oh, for that, I thank you. <clears throat> and I drink to the Irish. And there's plenty of them in the 7th Cavalry. <laughs> would they do for sergeants without the Irish? Yeah. <laughs> what would all the armies in the world do without the Irish? Yeah, I guess that's right. Oh, we're lost men we are. We've no flag nor no country to fight for. So we do our best for somebody else's flag and somebody else's country. I suppose. You're a lucky man, young Wellman, that you've got a country and a flag of your own to fight for. Well, they ain't been doing much fighting so far since the war. Yeah, that'll come. There's millions of Indians, laddie, book that don't like the so-called white people. And the day'll come when they'll rise up in their might. <laughs> and the air will be so thick with arrows you could get up and chin yourself on him. Yeah. <laughs> Many a lad'll do just that. And end up with his hair decorating some Ogallala Buck's war belt. <laughs> So have a drink. Gosh, Sergeant. I... It's an order. Well, uh... <coughs> it's powerful. Like lamb's milk. No, me buckle, me larrapin, great big <coughs> ugly buckle. I am a man without a flag, living my life out in the field of battle, fighting for a country that's not me own. And perishing for the thoughts of the green shores of the old sod. Who's an old sod? You call me an old sod? I didn't say a word, Sergeant. That's what I said. 
No, sir, son. No, sir. The whiskey makes me mellow. The Irish have fought for many a king against many a king. One of my ancestors perished at Fontenoy, fighting for the king of France with the wild geese. And there's been an Irishman in every war since the Trojan War. But that there's been one on either side. How could you have an army without an Irishman? You can't. I am in me cups, trumpeter. Well, that there is awful powerful whiskey, Sergeant. To an Irishman, there is no such thing as powerful whiskey, trumpeter. There is only weak men. That's so. Now, I said I had no flag of my own, son. I'm a homeless man, far away from the land of me birth. And I'm a lonesome man besides, and very unhappy. Well, cheer up, Sergeant. I was just about to say that I was going to cheer up, Trumpeter. Trumpeter, I forgot. I do have a flag to follow. No, to lead. Here, I have another drop of the potsheen light, and I'll tell you all about it. Well, uh, 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 go on. Now, I said a flag to follow, lad, but it, it's not to follow. It's a flag to lead, and it, it's not that great stars and stripes thing that Clancy, the color sergeant, carries, for I'm I'm not one of you Americans. I'll take care, sergeant. Nor is it you. the great yellow standard that Miles Corrigan from Cavan carries. I grant you they're very fine flags, son, but shame us daily. He has his own personal flag to carry and to lead with. I could wish they'd chosen green instead of red and white for it. Ah, uh, but it's a fine flag after all. And it has the symbol of... The symbol... Uh, well, what is it the symbol of, Trumpeter? What? Huh? Uh, what's what the symbol of? Oh, I, I'm talking about the guidon that I'm privileged to carry, my young friend. The guidon of Company A... 7th Cavalry, the only flag that Seamus, Dennis, Michael, Brian O'Daly ever swore allegiance to. Do you hear me? Uh-huh. Uh, you think I'm drunk? Ah, uh, listen, lad. There's been men died for that red and white rag. No, they didn't die for the other ones that the color sergeant carries. Them things is not the, not the personal thing that the guide on is, lad. This is my flag, your flag. This is Captain Tom and you and me and, and that black-hearted Schlegel, the mess sergeant, and, and a thousand other men that died for it and that will die for it in all the days to come. That's my flag trumpeter, and that's yours. Don't you ever leave no harm come to it. You should have brought your fiddle, Sergeant Daly. Oh, excuse me, sir. I, I didn't see the captain in the darkness. I, uh, I I was just discussing with the trumpeter. We ain't drunk, Captain. I see you're not. But you better go on into bed before the somebody that doesn't know any better comes along. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good night, now. Uh, sir, God bless the 7th Calvary. And especially Company A, sir. That's a good idea, boys. We're going to need all the blessings we can get. We're moving out into the field tomorrow. Go to bed, now. There's call to quarters. So we went out into the field, and we stayed there. You ask me how I feel about the Indians, I don't know. Lots of ways they got a raw deal, I suppose, but you haven't got much time to think about that when you're dodging arrows and slugs from 4570 Winchesters. And when you're right up to a place where the buzzards are sailing around overhead, and you see what the Indians did to a fellow that slept next to you in barracks, and you don't think about it at all. New recruits come out to us from J.B. or Fort Hayes all the time to fill up the empty spots in the muster roll that the engines made. In a couple of years, there wasn't very many of us old-timers left in A Company. Captain Tom, Seamus, me, a dozen others. And every once in a while, I think about what Seamus had said about our guidon. I was beginning to understand how he felt about it deep down in his Irish soul. He never said anything about it, uh, only just once. You see, it wasn't Indian fighting all the time. Sometimes there'd be periods when we could go hunting, maybe, or fishing if there was a trout stream not too far away. Never one man alone, never less than two. We carried our revolvers and our carbines and a full pack saddle. 
This time, Seamus spoke of it again. We'd been out for two days, the two of us, hoping we'd find a deer. But we didn't. We didn't care too much. We had a good time away from the post. and We were within a mile of the gate, riding along with that good, tired feeling a man has after a jaunt like this. And there was a shot. And I looked around, and Seamus was on the ground. Well, I don't want to tell you about the next few minutes. If you've never had anything like that happen to you, just be thankful I'm not telling you. And if you have, you know all about it. Anyway, what I want to tell you about is the talk we had. Seamus knew he was dying. You won't go ahead and leave me, Noah. Why, of course I won't, Seamus. He don't want him to get me here. Yeah, he'll have to get mine first. Good boy. Did you see him at all? Yeah. Uh, there ain't a soul in sight. Uh, they're watching, though. Yeah. So am I. None of that Monongi hill left. Huh? Yes. Yes, there is. Only a little, though. Uh, haven't got time to drink much, Noah. Here, boy. Good luck. No, no, wait. What? I remember a long time ago, we talked about Gaidon. Yes, yes, I remember. Uh, listen. You put Gaidon on my grave. What? Like a monument. My flag. <laughs> All flag I ever had. Great, Seamus. Sure. Drink to Gaidon. Company A. My flag. My... My monument. Now, you blow a blast for freedom, Noah. No. I don't want to say this. Drink. All right. Don't forget what I told you. <laughs> I won't. <coughs> Meet you. Fill is green, Noah. Buy a drink. Our hearts so brave, they won the name of Gary Owen. They heard the guns from the post, and a patrol came out and got us. And seven or eight more engines went to that happy hunting ground of theirs, too. Well, I kept my word to Seamus Daly. I couldn't put the troop guide on on his grave, but I did go to the artificer and had to make a little wooden guide on, a little swallowtailed red and white flag on a little lance pole. We put a seven and the A on it and Seamus's name. After the detail had fired the three rounds and Jim Bowen had sounded taps. I wanted to, but I couldn't. After that, I put the little guy down that had meant so much to him at the head of his grave. And it was a funny thing, you know. It started a thing in the regiment. Well, Seamus wasn't the only 7th Cavalryman who died those days. And some of them were buried way out in the yellow hills or along the walls of little canyons. But there wasn't a grave that wasn't marked with a little red and white guide on. Yes, there was quite a number of them. And I wonder what the coyotes and the prairie dogs thought. I wonder if there's any of those guidons left anywhere. That was better than 70 years ago. I guess they're not. Well, Captain Tom, he made me guide on. I'd not have thought so much about it before, I suppose, but you'd be surprised what that guide on meant to me. Or would you? Oh, I know it's the fashion to cry down soldiers, sure. Always is right after a war, but, well, soldiers ain't bad people, you know. Seamus Daly, Captain Tom, the old man. Yeah, that guy down was pretty important to me. Seamus said men had died for it. He died for it. He said men would die for it. That was true, too. Men always have to have something to follow, to believe in. Uh, guide on. Well, 
Anyway, like Captain Tom said, I ought to have brung my fiddle. Captain Tom, him and me, we got to be pretty good friends. He was no officer to impose on enlisted man's time. He was all business. He was the kind of officer that eh, soldiers dream about. Strict, but A company yet better than any other company in the squadron. And tough, but leave one of his troopers get sick or something, and Captain Tom was like his father and mother put together. He used to like to walk around him and even after tattoo. Sometimes I'd see him down around the stable or somewhere, and we'd stop and talk. He was always born a chew of eating tobacco. I remember that one night. Give us a chew, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I'm going to buy you a plug one of these days. <laughs> uh, you don't use up much, Captain. Uh, thanks, Noah. Fine night, eh? Uh, yes, sir. S sir, uh, would the captain put in for a new lance pole for the guy now? Mm, what's the matter with the one you got? Well, well sir, it's, it's kind of warped a little bit. And, well, it's getting to look kind of, uh, you know, uh, used-like. <laughs> You're as bad as Seamus Daly used to be with that guide on, Noah. Well, I... I mean to be, Captain. Poor Seamus. I had a great regard for that man. Me too, sir. Well, God rest his soul. He's better off than we are. Yes, sir, I suppose so. If ever a man went straight to Fiddler's Green, Seamus is the man. Sir, Seamus said something about buying me a drink in Fiddler's Green... I never heard that expression before, and, well, I've been meaning ever since to ask you somebody... you never heard of Fiddler's Green? No, sir. Is that an Irish saying for heaven? <laughs> no, Sergeant. No. You see, good cavalrymen don't want to go to heaven because they won't find any of their friends there. And they don't want to go to the other place because they've had too much of that on earth. So, there's a very special place right in between the two that's for good cavalrymen only. And that's Fiddler's Green. That's where Seamus would be then, sir. Yes, sir. All the good cavalrymen from the day the world began are in Fiddler's Green. The Roman cataphracts of Julius Caesar, King Arthur and his knights, the cavaliers and the roundheads. And Seamus sure is shooting, sir. Yes, I believe that. Well, I hope I make it. You take care of that guy, Don, boy. You will. I aim to, sir. Well, thanks for the chew. You're welcome, sir. Oh, say, you uh, want to take a little trip? Yes, sir. You know my brother's coming out to command the regiment, didn't you? Yes, sir, I heard that. Well, I think I ought to send an escort out to bring him, as long as I'm senior officer, present with troops, so you can take a detail of men for the troop and... Go pick him up and bring him back, huh? Yes, sir, sure. Good enough. We can start tomorrow night after retreat. Make it in a couple of days and a couple of days coming back. Yes, sir. All right, then. Come over to my quarters after breakfast tomorrow and I'll give you the details. Yes, sir. Good night, Sergeant. Good night, sir. I can remember that date just as plain. The 21st of June, 1875. I took my detail and we rode overland to the railroad. We met the new commanding officer. I apologized for not being an officer, but I said Captain Tom didn't have enough officers, so would the general pardon me, too? So he laughed. He was a great big jolly fellow. Looked just like his brother Tom. Big mustache, same yellow hair. <laughs> and he says, That's all right, Sergeant. After I get hold of the regiment for a while, I'm going to see that we get enough officers so my sergeants won't have to work their heads off. Mm, that sure be fine, sir. That yeah, sure will. Now, if the general's ready to go, sir, move out. Head him off. Mouth. Power drop. Yo. kept asking questions about the Indians, about casualties, about the chance of one big campaign against them, finishing up the killing and murdering once and for all. He sure was anxious to make a good showing. And he knew his business. He was so glad to get into the open after being in them posts back east for so long. He asked me a million questions about engine fighting, and I answered them best I could. I was getting to be quite a veteran then myself, see? 
And anybody that fought under Captain Tom would get to be a veteran awful fast anyway. So we had some pretty good talk. Then the second morning out on the way back, we had some breakfast. He was just saddling up. The general calls me over to him. Sergeant? Yes, sir? Uh, what's that up there on the side of that hill? Where, sir? Uh, right over there, don't you see? No, sir, I don't see anything. Look over my finger. Yes, sir. What kind of thing, sir? Oh, looks like a cavalry guider under me, but... Uh, yeah, it couldn't be, sir. No? At least, I don't think so. Well, I'll have a look through the glasses. Yeah, by Jove, it is a guide on. Here, yeah, look. Sir, I don't see nothing. Give me the glasses. Yeah, it is. I can see the number in the letter. It's the seventh, and it's Company A. Yeah, what could that be? Is Tom... Well, I know, sir. But I think I know what it is. What? That would be the grave of a 7th Cavalryman, sir. But I didn't know that. What's the name of that river down there? Why, that's the Little Bighorn, General Custer. So, you see, it was just one year later... The 25th of June, 1876. While everybody was enjoying the Centennial Exposition back east, the General Custer led us, me and Captain Tom Custer and all of us, onto that battlefield at the Little Bighorn. And, well, you know, we all got killed. It was a 7th Cavalryman's grave. Well... That's why we can't get into Fiddler's Green. I lost a troop's guide on. Well, he lost the regiment. And neither one of us can get into Fiddler's Green till there isn't any more 7th Cavalry. And that'll be a long, long time. Listen to Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper. The man who spoke to you was Ernest Chappell. And both Mr. Cooper and myself are mighty happy to have had Mr. Pat O'Malley with us tonight to play Seamus Daly. Captain Tom Custer was Arthur Cole. And Floyd Buckley played General George Armstrong Custer. The original music for Quiet, Please is composed and played by Albert Berman. Now, for a word about next week's Quiet, Please, here is our writer-director, Willis Cooper. My story for next week is called Whence Came You? It's about a man who traveled in the East, and well, you listen, will you? And so, until next week at the same time, I am quietly yours, Ernest Chappell. program comes to you from New York. This is the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System.